Welcome back to Michigan's Big Show with Michael Patrick Shield. My name is Dwayne Gill. I'm your host today. And, I, you know, the, the great thing about being a guest host in this show, I get to bring on whoever I want. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and like Mike told me, he says, uh, it's your show. You do what you want to do. And it reminded me of Boomerang. Where the guy was like, I got total control, total control. <laughs> that can be good or bad, right? You got that right. <laughs> but today, you got total control of my good friend, Mr. Lindsey Huddleston the second. He's the founder and CEO of the Huddleston Consulting Group, LLC. Provides consulting and motivational speaking. And he's here today to talk about a book that he wrote by the name of Unlikely Saviors. Realizing the positive impact amateur and professional athletes can have on society through philanthropy. Now, I'm going to give you the shameless plug. Let them see this right here. Appreciate that. So, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great, Dwayne. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks for coming on the show. Sure, sure. So, tell us a little bit about your book. Oh, wow. Uh, Unlikely Savers. First of all, you're doing a wonderful job. Hey, thank you. Michael Patrick Shields and his athletes and his team. Uh, You guys are doing a great job. But the book, uh, the idea came from being at a championship high school game at Michigan State up the road. And uh, at the time, I was in corporate America. I did, uh, along with the lobby, and I did the community relations piece, so I had access to a lot of foundation dollars. But anyway, the swagger that the high school players have, they have like NBA swagger. I like that swagger. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Everyone's looking up to them. Um, I was with a diverse group of gentlemen. They knew everything about Dwayne Gill, where he was going (laughs) to college at. Well, I hope that wasn't the case, but just knew everything about the individual. (laughs) Right, right. And I just thought to myself, wow, these young men and women have a platform because the community responds well to them. If they had access to the resources I had, they can do so much. So when you talk about the social media piece, just like our last guest and everyone, using social media, student athletes and amateur athletes as well as professional athletes can do a great deal <clears throat> Excuse me, with that and uh, make a great impact on the community. Awesome, awesome. So, so you wrote the book based on what you saw as far as uh, these, these kids, you know, going, doing sports, that they eventually will become famous and how they can use sure. their, their fame to be philanthropic. With exactly. helping help reaching back into exactly. the community, exactly. Whether it's uh, current athletes coming up, or you know, uh, professional athletes. I have professional athletes in the book. Okay. I was able to work with Indomitian and Sue. We were okay. just talking about the Lions. Worked closely with his family foundation, and he had a tweet up, and I was uh, one of the key people to help uh, get that going. Um, he was trying to break his world record with that. Uh, Jalen Rose, we all know, is doing some great things down in Detroit, my hometown, our hometown. Yes. And to uh, have him in the book, and also uh, T.J. Duckett uh, from Michigan State, mm-hmm. right up the road. Gave a wonderful interview and some great insight as far as uh, what athletes can do when the cheering stops. Because there's such an ego piece that when the sport is over, these athletes can leverage that to do some great things for the community as well as for themselves. Well, that's outstanding. And that's something that needs to be done, you know. And I, I think I, I'm, I, I also do a little motivational speaking, yes, too. Do. And um, I always say one of, one of my foundations in my speeches is, is to give back and, and to pay it forward. You know, find someone and help them out because someone helps you, you know, just like they say, uh, you didn't build it. Uh, That's the big tagline right now. Yeah, I know. That's getting a lot of legs right now. Getting a lot of But the thing is, I think it's taken out of context because, again, somebody helped somebody, you know, and uh, I think that's good, too. What do you think about that, Dave? Uh, As far as that uh, line being overused, (laughs) (laughs) I I believe that, yes, everybody along the way gets some help. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, you know, but uh, to give a little credit to people that did build it, you know, that's one thing. But I think, yeah, I, I'm sure that if he, if Obama could have taken it back, rephrased it by one or sure. two words so that people couldn't have abused it. Sure. <laughs> you know, any, anybody wants to go back in time. But I know what he meant. Yeah, that, I got nothing to, nothing against that statement. That kind of reminds me of you. You'd be blown away. You remember that? One? Oh, my goodness. Wow. How many times do we hear that? Right. Woo, man. Woo. So what, what are some of the other projects that you're working on Sure, right sure. Well, along with the book, I have the Philanthropic Project where I go to middle schools, high schools, and colleges and talk to student athletes about how they can leverage sports. And okay. uh, the goal is to make it a free program because in Michigan's economy, a lot of schools can't put those type of resources into it. But the business model I've created, Dwayne, is that uh, companies can sponsor uh, the project so they can get some great promotion for the great things they're doing, but also give this message to these young people. And it's a very inspiring message. Also, I'm happy to announce that one of the people featuring the book, Horatio Williams and Horatio Williams Foundation, uh, we're going to be doing a project with Ford Motor Company, and I'll be doing some life skills training for some young people. We know 
uh, we can't do enough of that. So I'm oh, looking yeah. forward to being able to launch that and just really being uh, able to give back to the community with the skill set that I've had, that I've acquired. And I like to say uh, from the corner to the corner office, mm -hmm. my experiences from the inner city to corporate America and being able to give back and using that resource to uh, be a uh, benefit to others. I'm really liking the fact that he is uh, is uh, overly concerned with the youth. I mean, to, to, burn, uh, to get them into the sport with this mindset. Because sure. so many athletes, uh, you know, uh, clawed their way to the top, and it wasn't until they were making their millions uh, before they decided to get in philanthropy yeah, right, in absolutely. any way. Right. Yeah. And it was almost like a payback, like, yeah, but but now, you know, to, to raise a, a high school kid to know that just a linebacker on a high school team, there's an 11-year-old kid looking up to him absolutely. right now. And absolutely. he's got he's to bear that load to, to be a role model even at that age. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely right. So what's your, you know, and we didn't get a chance to get into this, but real quick, tell, tell us a little bit about your background and about our relationship. Sure, sure. We go back, Dwayne, and this is perfect for me as a motivational speaker because one of the things I talk about is finding your purpose. And I met Dwayne, guys, almost 10 years ago, and one of his colleagues introduced me and said, he thinks he's a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and lo and behold, a few weeks later, you said, hey, I'm going to do a little stand-up, you know, and, and he tried his bit. I remember that. But one thing I can tell people about following their passion, Dwayne is a perfect example, is along with the passion, you must have the protocol. And Dwayne became a student of comedy. He wasn't just saying, I'm excited about this. He was a student of it, and I became more educated on it, about how he did things. And, and Dwayne was on stage with Kevin Hart, the hottest comedian in the game right now. And I think that says a story to go from saying, hey, this is my passion, and 10 years have passed, but I'm sure it doesn't seem like it's been 10 years. It no, doesn't seem it that really way with doesn't. me. But that's the key, Dwayne. You are an inspiration about Find your passion. Absolutely. And when you find your passion, and what is your passion for those, and that's something you'll be willing to do for free. And mm -hmm. you can pay me for it. <laughs> 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 but I, I think your story is an excellent example of how you can find your passion. You're living the dream, and Absolutely. I'm so happy and proud of you and everything you have going on, man. Thanks so much. And uh, mm -hmm. like I said, and Lindsay's the kind of guy that when we met, uh, he was working for Governor Granholm, and he was an advanced guy, and uh, we – we we done a lot of good stuff, yes, you, know, you know. Yes, don't make me treat you like a dude. Dude. Oh man, yeah, that was a shot heard around the world. Yeah, that, that was your little thing, but that's a whole other story. I tell right. you about that, Dave, off off uh, off mic. <laughs> yep. Right. But uh, I think that what you're doing right now is awesome. I want you to keep it up. Um, where you. can we get more information about um, Unlikely Saviors? Well, social media, you can't beat that. You can follow me at Unlikely Saviors, uh, also at the Huddleston Group, which is the parent company, or at my website, Unlikely Saviors, where you can get the book. Uh, if you're local in the area, you can go to Shula's and Oakland's. They have copies there waiting for you. And uh, I'm going to give copies to the whole team right here, too. Oh, right. Yeah. I, 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 do that. I you guys going to get sure, it. Sure. You the got one, a copy for, Ra for, I, I for got Rochelle, the, I got too, a cover. Right? I got, and we'll have one for Michael when he returns. I'll give you one, but I'll get it back in the parking lot, Dwayne. So yeah. <laughs> 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 you were on tour during my book signing, so I couldn't get you one. But, no, I'm happy to share that and just, you know, uh, really be able to get the next generation more involved in philanthropy. Man, that is we'll, awesome. we'll make this required reading for uh, high school athletes. I like that. I like that. You heard it here first. I <laughs> yes, like that. absolutely. Well, hey, it's been a pleasure to have you on the Michael Patrick Shield Show, Show. My name is Dwayne Gill. And, hey, Dave, uh, what we got going there next? I'm, I'm really excited. It's <laughs> having a good day here. Big old show ahead of us, my friend. Okay. Hey, thanks for bringing in Lindsay, man. Great yeah. guy. Great guy. Thank uh, you. And we'll be right back from the Grand Travis Pie Company, Michigan's Big Show with Michael Patrick Shield. If you're lucky enough to say that you're your